I'm going to talk to you today about some of the biggest tricksters we have in our group. Not members, but minerals. These trip everybody up. And there's a good reason for it, because they're all incredibly, remarkably similar. Small differences in all of them. I'm going to teach you how to tell the difference in all of them. All right. First of all, quartz. Let's talk about what quartz is. Quartz is silicon dioxide. SiO2. Now this is interesting because this is actually unstable. If you look at the chemical formula, it doesn't actually make sense. Because if you isolate the molecule, what you need to have is SiO4. Well, what happens is you get chains of this stuff forming. So, a way to visualize it, this isn't literally what's happening with the crystal lattice, but a way to visualize it is you need two oxygens bound to a silicon on one side, and then two oxygens. That's four oxygens, one silicon, just like that. However, then silicon comes along and says, oh, hey, look, there's two free oxygens there. Let me just bind onto that and grab two more. And then other silicon says, oh, hey, look at those two oxygens over there. Let me, let me just bind onto that. Yeah, two more. And what you end up is with a chain of silica where the formula actually turns into SiO2, even though each one of these is like an SiO4. But the situation is they all just kind of share a pair of oxygen uh, molecules there. The actual structure for quartz is a little bit more complicated than that. It's actually going to look more like and there'll be a silicon up here that's like, oh hey, look at those. And then I'll combine with some oxygen down here, and then there'll be a silicon down here, who's like, oh, hey, look at those guys up there. And so this is, again, not literally what's happening, but it's closer to the lattice structure of quartz. All right, when I say lattice structure, these minerals, they, they have very organized patterns in their, in their atoms and molecules. All right, that's what... Uh, really gives them their clarity. That's what really makes them uh, look quite beautiful. All right. So, this is quartz. There is another form of quartz called moganite, which is not something you will ever find a large sample of. However, it is a form that's monoclinic, and that one actually forms these planes. It actually kind of does this structure like this, where they're all kind of bound like that, and then we'll get a silicon down here, and it'll bind those like so, right? So you get a very different form, a different, very different crystal lattice for your silicon, uh, but the exact same chemical composition. That seems needlessly complicated, right? But it's important because that's the difference between some of what you're seeing up here. So uh, quartz is quartz. It's, it's the, the um, structure similar to this. Uh, and chalcedony, chalcedony or chalcedony, you can pronounce it either way. I tend to pronounce it both ways. Um, it is what we call cryptocrystalline. And I'll write that word down because it's a nice big one. It's a $5 word here. Crypto crystalline. I missed a note there. There we go. All right. So you have crystalline rocks where you can see the crystals in them. Things like granites. You have finely crystalline. They're real small. You have microcrystalline. You can only see it through a microscope. Then you've got cryptocrystalline, where they're so small that even if you have a regular optical microscope, you're still not going to be able to see the crystals. You're going to have to buy some really expensive equipment from the university, pretty much. Right? 
Chalcedony is a cryptocrystalline mixture of quartz and moganite here. And what you end up with is instead of a nice, really, uh, nice, really uh, clear crystal, you end up with these kind of milky, but very smooth, waxy minerals. This one has a bit of chalcedony in the center here. It's very common to get some interesting colors in chalcedony. This one is an agate. I'll talk about that a little bit more later. But look at that caramel color in there and those reds on the outside. That's classic chalcedony, all right? Those are cryptocrystalline and so fine crystals that you will never see it with the naked eye. Intergrowths. And just a, a whole mixture of them, of quartz and that weirdly structured quartz, moganite. Now, that covers chalcedony. What about quartz versus chert? Right? Chert is actually not a mineral. Chert is a rock. It is a rock that's deposited in the bottom of deep oceans. You have organisms dying and their bodies sink to the bottom. In the deep ocean, though, calcium carbonate, calcite, dissolves. And so all you're left with is silicon um, parts of the body, uh, mostly from diatoms, little, little algae-like animals. They have glassy bodies. And they accumulate what's called a silicious ooze. You get sheets of just this goopy, gross, diatomaceous material down there. It's an ooze. Uh, and over time, it compacts and hardens and forms cryptocrystalline quartz. Again, cryptocrystalline. I told you there's going to be a lot of overlap with all of this. And if we take a look at a piece of chert over here, banded chert is very famous in the group. People love the banded chert. It's very waxy. It feels waxy like chalcedony. However, it doesn't quite have the shininess that the chalcedony has. Chalcedony should be translucent to light. When you hold a light up to it, you should be able to shine through it a bit. Let's see here. This is another piece of chert here. Sometimes chert around Michigan actually looks blue, and that's a feature of weathering. That is probably manganese stuck to it, but if you find a broken piece, you can see that it's usually actually brown. Here's a piece from Leland I picked up that I really liked. Never would have identified with as chert, except to take a look at this broken section in here. That's cryptocrystalline quartz in there, formed at the bottom of the ocean. Chert. So we got a bit more chert here. A lot of overlap with chalcedony. Uh, the difference is it's a little bit less uh, waxy. Uh, and you can't shine light through it. All right. How about chert versus jasper? This is an easy one. Jasper is red chert in Michigan. Jasper is an ancient word that used to be applied to lots of different rocks way before there was the science of geology. However, it's pretty straightforward in Michigan. All jasper in Michigan is iron rich chert. It's red chert. We come over here to the cabinet of wonders. We'll have a look at this here. Is it red chert or is it jasper? The answer is yes, it's both. Red chert is jasper. Real easy in that way. All right. And finally, we've got chalcedony versus agate. What is the definition of an agate? There are so many questions about this in our group. Is this an agate? Is this an agate? And it's usually very easy to tell, but people just don't have that information. So what is an agate? An agate is banded chalcedony And 
and you should be able to shine a light on it and see some light passing through. It needs to be translucent. And that's it. Pretty straightforward. If you've got calcedony and it's got banding in it and you can shine a light on it and see through it at all, then you've got an agate. I've got this agate over here that I was showing earlier. Even without actually getting a light on it, you can see that you can you can pass light through this. It, you don't really need to hold a flashlight to it to prove the, the point there. I've got some more agates over here in my cabinet. We'll take a look at a couple of these. These are all small. I'm not a, not a widespread agate hunter or anything, so I've got kind of a small collection of agates here. I'm going to pick up some stones that may not all be agates, but I'll point them, point them out as we go here. All right, so here we go. What have we got? We got an agate here. We have, get that in the camera there. All right, it's translucent, light passes through it. And you have chalcedony. And there's not a whole lot of bands, but you know what? There is at least one that counts as an agate. Here we've got, probably can't call this an agate. I love this one though. It kind of looks like a piece of, candy corn or watermelon candy of some sort. This is definitely a chalcedony though. Interesting colors, very waxy luster to it. Here we go, we got, we got some definite agate here in this one again. We got the banding, translucent, definite agate. What we got here, we got chalcedony, we got some bands in it. You can pass a little bit of light through it. Got agate. This one here. Well, it's definitely chalcedony. I'm not sure I see banding in it, so I don't think we can call that an agate, but it's definitely chalcedony. All right, so let's review quartz. If you don't know how to identify quartz, I've produced a couple of other videos recently about how to tell the difference between quartzite and quartz and quartz and calcite. So have a look at those. All right. Chalcedony is a cryptocrystalline mixture of two different types of quartz, moganite and actual quartz, uh, and it's a mineral. Turf is a rock composed of cryptocrystalline quartz. Jasper is red chert. And agate is banded chalcedony that you should be able to pass the light through and get a little bit of light coming through. All right. For identifying them in the field, you're looking for waxy, smooth, should be at least partially translucent to light. For chert, a little bit less waxy and smooth than chalcedony, but still pretty waxy, still pretty smooth, usually does not pass light through it. Jasper, you're looking for chert but red. And agate, you're looking for chalcedony but banded. And that does it. I hope that helps.